Uh, some of the numbers we're getting from China, latest numbers, 108 more deaths on Tuesday, overall death over 1,000 at this point. But the World Health Organization says the trend is actually going downward. So is this, in fact, a turning point with no new cases in the last few days? Well, uh, Asya, you and I have uh, communicated offline about this, and I think that uh that actually, if you look at the WHO's dashboard they set up for this purpose, you'll find that on that dashboard, the peak number of reported cases was on February 4th, which is quite some time ago. Uh, I have not seen this reported anywhere. Uh, We're talking about it. Uh, until, <laughs> until this very moment. Uh, now, what's interesting to me is that China is now saying that they think that cases will peak soon. The fact that WHO's graph shows them peaking you know, a week ago, roughly, and China says they'll peak soon, suggests to me, of course, there's a difference between China's numbers and WHO's. Wouldn't be surprised at a lag time between what China is finding mm -hmm. and what they're reporting to the WHO. But both of those numbers look good. Uh, I think it certainly doesn't mean that we need to relax or we need to stop paying attention, but it also doesn't mean that we need to head for the hills, as uh, I think some of the reporting suggests. Have we learned anything new, doctor, in the last few days, few weeks, in how this virus is spread? Well, uh, the last time you and I talked, they talked a little bit about fecal oral, uh, about finding this virus in the feces. I, I think there have been no cases of fecal oral. There was a little bit of an uh, outcry about possible uh, aerosol spread, which, as you remember, is uh, airborne and uh, spreads further than the so-called droplet spread, which we know is current with the virus. Uh, that has not been confirmed at all. And I think if you look at a country like the United States, where we had, we've had 13, we currently have 13 cases in the United States, all from China or with a direct connection to China. We've had no spread to people who haven't had a direct connection to China. And so we have 13 cases, uh, I think last week we had 12 in a country of 330 million people. Right? That, uh, I think, knowing that has happened over the course of the last mm -hmm. weeks tells us something important about the virus. It doesn't spread that easily when we are watching it. Uh, even in China, I think if you look at the extraordinary number of cases, 40,000 cases, but it's in a population of, you know, extremely dense country with a population of, what, 1.3 billion people. That also tells us something about the virus. Right. So um, uh, as, I, as I've said to you offline, I've been, I've been dismayed that what I see in the media is reports of, for example, uh, the cumulative number of cases, which is an important figure to keep in mind. How many, what's the total number of deaths? Sure. But it's also important to keep in mind that that, by definition, rises every single day. Mm -hmm. Even while the number of, of cases falls, even after the virus peaks, whether it was last week or it's soon to come, even after this outbreak peaks, the number of, of deaths is going to keep rising for some time. The number of cases will continue to rise, and it gives people the impression every day that things are getting worse when, in fact, the evidence is that actually things are either peaked or about to peak. And I think one of the big concerns, uh, Dr. Solanikio, is there are so many unknowns still sure. at this point. Sure. Uh, we have a team from the WHO um, in China, and they've said their main goal is containment. Uh, talk to us a little bit. When a team from WHO goes to China during a crisis mode, how can they help the Chinese at this point? Well, I mean, I don't think that the I don't think it's that the Chinese lack resources necessarily, or the resources they lack uh, probably can't be supplied by WHO. In the sense that, um, if they're short of masks, for example, that's a manufacturing issue, and I think that China would be able to teach the rest of us about how to overcome a manufacturing issue. What WHO can provide is uh, more of an assurance that the information that we're getting from China is in fact reliable information and up to date. So I think it's very important that WHO is in country now. Um, and can begin to report to us exactly what they're seeing. Um, again, not to suggest that China's been hiding something, not mm -hmm. to suggest the numbers aren't accurate, but it's always great to be skeptical and to double check. Sure. And very quickly, doctor, what about the incubation period? Is it still 14 days from what you understand? I, I think that's still people's best guess, but remember, okay. every one of these numbers that you see, whether it's the case fatality rate uh, or it's the incubation period, is bracketed by a very, very wide range of we don't know. Right, so you know, 14 days plus minus seven days, uh, I think. Well, that's that's 21 days. <laughs> right, and and it's important to know that, uh, of course, we need to know what the what the transmission mode is. We need to know what the case fatality rate is. We need to know what the incubation period is, and we will know. Important to remember that none of that will affect what the average person, whether here or China, can do to protect themselves, which is washing your hands and if you're coughing and have a fever, 
seek medical care and, and for heaven's sake, wear a mask.